Okay, to continue from where we left off, more or less, we were creating a class called test. Notice I've closed, I've closed the browser out, but there's a very easy way in Smalltalk to get back to that. We can simply select a class name and pr press Command B or Control B or Alt B, depending on your system. Sure enough, it opens the system browser to a place where test is defined, which is in the package testing testing. Here's the class name. Notice we have one message. That message isn't yet classified, so it appears in two places as the category as yet classified and the category all. So let's modify first message somewhat. We are looking at the edit pane at the bottom of the system browser or the class browser, and we're going to say, oh, transform show oh self class carriage return and hopefully that will work so now we save it transform of course transcript did you notice that it was asking what the heck I meant let's try that again we're going to save it it says, what do you mean by transform? And it gives you a, a bunch of uh, choices that you could use instead, but in fact, none of them are correct. What I wanted was transcript. So let's misspell transcript. Transcript. And save it again. And this time, it recognizes transcript as the valid name that we want. So I can simply select it with a menu. It saves it. And now, we already have a test instance. When you create a, an object of type test, you call it an instance, an object that is an instance of class test. So we're going to say my test first message, which will tell my test evoke the code named first message. So we do it, and sure enough, it types the name of the class of self. Self being the object, the class of self being test. So we could also get that same result by simply saying my test class and printing it. And indeed, the class of my test is test. All right, let's create a second message. Let's call it first message again, and then we're going to pass in a variable. We'll just call it object. Now, we're going to say transcript show object carriage return. And when we save it, it saves it. Notice now we have two messages listed. First message and first message colon. The difference between them is basically they are two different messages. It's, a message is actually stored as a special um, object. And we'll show you that in a minute. One message expects to have a variable passed along with it. That's first message colon. One message does not. So now if we say one message first message something and do it it doesn't go to the first message which is going to print out self class it goes to this message first message colon grabs the object that we passed in trans and does a transcript show message with the object, and then another message to transcript for the carriage return. Okay, so let's continue. Now we're going to create a new message called first message colon second part. 
and I'm going to call it object 2. So we're now going to say transcript show object carriage return transcript show object carriage return 2. We save it and it creates a new message named first message colon second part message colon. And that message can be sent to my test also. Second part colon else. So what happens when we do it? Well, my test receives the message first message colon second message with two bits of information, two objects passed in, one a text string named something and another is a text string something else. So when my test receives the message it executes the code found here. So it will say ter transcript show object, the first parameter, the first bit of data, transcript show object 2, the next bit of data. So what should we see? We should see something else. And do we? Yes, we do. But notice I put a carriage return after each of these. Suppose I didn't want the carriage return. Well, we could have done it this way. I think. Hmm. Ah. Show. Object 2. And perhaps this way will work, and perhaps it won't. Nothing more expected. Okay, I see why. Because show, exp the actual message is show colon, and I was only giving it show without the colon. So now we save it. No errors. We go back and do it again. And this time we get something else all in one line. So there's a way of adding even more. Third part colon object 3. And to show you that Squeak is able to do things you wouldn't quite expect, we are going to pass in something other than a piece of text. Every object in the system is actually able to convert itself to text at some point. So we're going to set we are going to save this and we're going to send the message. Let's do it this way. Something. Second part something. And we call that third part. Third part colon seven. Now up here we'll make sure we're referring to object three. Save it again. And now when we evaluate it, we get something else seven. Because if we send any object If we pass any object to transcript show, any object has a way of displaying itself as a string. It may not be what you expect, but you will always get something as a string. Suppose we had passed in the object nil. Nil is just a, a, an object that if you encounter one and try to send it a message, it will give you an error. All object, all variables are, are initialized to nil, so that if you forget to add a value to a variable, you will get an error message. But nil is a valid object, so we can indeed say first message something, second part something else, third part nil, and it will take the string something else, and then the string nil is what nil knows how to do when it is requested to give its name or 
describe itself text-wise. So, you see we have four messages now. First message, without a colon, accepts no variables or no parameters. Second message is first message colon, it accepts one parameter. First message colon, second part colon, accepts two parameters. First message colon, second part colon, third part colon, accepts three parameters. And that's probably enough for now.